mining has always played a crucial role in the development of human civilizations. For centuries, the success of gathering the necessary raw materials relied on basic tools and sole manpower. Nowadays, in most of the mines, we can find less people and more machines. But there are mines where exploitation is considered as uneconomical due to the small size of the deposits or the difficulty to access them. Several European research institutes formed an alliance to overcome this problem. They are developing an autonomous mining robot, which would be able to extract small and hard-to-reach deposits with minimal impact on the surface. Finnish robotic engineers are testing a simple robot with an odd spiral instead of wheels. The so-called Archimedes screw is an unconventional solution for propulsion, but it's known to work on all terrains – in mud, in water and even underground. Looks good, but how do we get a proper robot at the end? To find the answer, we need to visit researchers all around Europe. Our first stop is at the Polytechnic University of Madrid, more precisely, the Center for Automation and Robotics. This model was built to test ideas that can be used for the real-size prototype. There are many things to be learned. How to drive the screws, how modules can automatically connect, or what kind of drilling head should be used. Right next door, programmers are working on the artificial intelligence-based software for autonomous navigation and situational awareness. The final robot should be able to work entirely on its own, making decisions without human supervision. The team is making the final adjustments to get the robot ready for a more spacious test site. It seems like the systems are working fine. It's time to move forward and find some real challenging terrain. This bigger model was built in Tallinn, Estonia, and right now it is tested in Belgium together with local geologists. On the bottom of this robot, we can see some unusual sensors, the so-called whiskers. But what do they do? How do they work? And where do they come from? Human inventions often mimics nature. It is called bio-inspiration. Millions of years of evolution means millions of ideas. Even better, through the filter of natural selection, only the good ideas survived. Here at the Center of Biorobotics at the Tallinn University of Technology, the ideas to be harvested are ranging from different propulsion systems to sophisticated sensors. Based on the perception of the flow-sensing lateral line organ found in fish, the team has successfully developed a flow meter device. The sensor detects the direction and the velocity of the water by registering the tilt of the mast. But they did not stop here. The concept can also be used to build artificial whiskers. By mounting many whiskers on a robot and analyzing all their movements collectively, a 3D model of the terrain can be built. The model works like a map for autonomous navigation. This abandoned mine in Belgium is a perfect place to test the abilities of the whiskers and other custom-designed sensors. This is crucial, as conventional devices would not work in the extreme environment the mining robot is being developed for. The robot has to gather geophysical information to be able to follow deposits. The electrical resistivity tomography method seems like a good option. Normally, many electrodes are placed meters apart to get good results. 
But in this case, the method needs to be adjusted to match the size of the robot. This means testing different electrode densities, mountings, and algorithms. In addition to the geophysical data, geological information is also needed. The blinking device on the front is a spectrometer which can detect different minerals. These are all delicate sensors, but at the end we are talking about a heavy-duty mining machine. The members of the Mechatronic Research Group of Tampere University, Finland, are experts on building novel machines. They are responsible for constructing the RM1, the real-size robo-miner. Their focus right now is on the propulsion system and how the necessary force for a mining machine can be created and controlled. It's still a model, but some of the solutions, for instance, the elements of the hydraulic system, are to be used in the final version as well. It's still a long way until we can meet the first autonomous robo-miner. But all the researchers and engineers involved in the project are working around the clock to make their dream come true.